Welcome. In this tutorial, we'll look at how we can incorporate images into our processing projects. If you watched the last tutorial on fonts, the process is practically the same, though we do have a few extra options we're working with, but the concept is indeed virtually identical. We have a data folder where we put our image file. Then we create a variable. It's a P image type, so capital P, capital I for it. I name mine Unidog, and then we load the image inside our setup. So it's very, very important. We only use load image in our setup, and we only do it one time for each image. So if we have five images, we'll have five load image statements. We don't do it in draw because then we're loading and reloading the image into memory multiple times, effectively creating different instances of it, and we will run out of memory. So load image only happens inside setup, not in draw. Inside our draw, this is where we can use the image function to display our image on screen. So in this case, I'm referencing that image variable and the X and Y location that I want to see it. So if we take a look at the sketch, we will see there it is. Now you'll see there's two versions of our Unidog showing up here because in one version, I have moved the X and Y down and I have scaled it. Notice my scale is disproportionate. My image is squished because I said I wanted to be 100 pixels wide and 200 pixels tall. But this image that I'm looking at is actually the same size as my sketch. So when I said zero, zero, I'm and don't put any numbers after that, it will just put it in at its native size. Well, how do I know what the native size is? Because I made it that way. Inside of Photoshop, I took the image that I downloaded off of Pexels, and I went under image size, and I sized it to the closest approximation. And I said 600 here, and it's 900 and some pixels wide at that point. So then I also had to then go under canvas size and trim it down to 800 and 600. And after I did that, my image was indeed 800 by 600 pixels tall. And I could simply do a file export, quick export as PNG to make the PNG file, put it inside my data folder. So as it exists in my data folder, there is my PNG image. If we get info on it, we can go and look at this project or file and go more info and we can see it's 800 by 600 RGB no alpha channel. So we know it is the size of our sketch. So when I'm referencing it and taking a look at it inside of code, we will see there I can put it. So if I were to say instead putting it at 00, zero we go 100 over and 50 down because remember it's X, Y width and height. And if we run it, we'll see how that image has been shifted. The other one is there. The same way that I can make an image smaller, I can also make it bigger. So currently, if, you know, instead of 800 here, why don't we go 1200 there. And we'll just bump this up to say 900 and see what it does. And we can see it put it way over there. And I could even put in a negative number for this. So if we say negative 400, we bump it over. So you can see how we scaled up that image. We moved it over. You can play with the numbers. You can make them do whatever you want. X, Y, width, and height. Those are the values that we're putting in. And what is the image? object or image variable that we're working with. So we create the variable, we use load image to then load the image data into it, and now I drew two copies of it. So I didn't need to use load image twice when I'm redrawing the same image on screen. So I could draw as many of these in all different sizes and different positions on my project. So just remember, put your image file in your data folder, you make a p image variable to hold a reference to it. Use load image only in setup. It's super critical that this load image only shows up inside your setup. And then inside our draw or other functions that we call from within draw, that is where we use our image command to look at the image 
on screen. Good luck and have fun.